The next stop on our tour takes us back into the timeline that we laid out on the letter wall. This whole room is dedicated to pre-electric and non-electric style signs. Starting on the left, you will see a giant shoe, a pocket watch, top hat, and an axe head. All of these are collectively known as trade signs. Trade signs are an important concept in the sign industry. They are signs that are made into the shape of an object, and that object represents a particular industry or a particular field. So if you see a giant shoe outside of a shop, you could probably guess that they're working on shoes in there. These style signs were particularly useful when you had a population that wasn't always literate. If people cannot read, it really doesn't matter what you put on your sign, but if you make that sign into the shape of something they recognize, then they'll be able to figure out where to go. Because of its simplicity, these are amongst the very first style signs ever used by humans, period, and we never abandon that concept. All throughout the museum, we will continue to find trade signs, and you will find them as you drive around later today. This also includes things that are not always so literal, and the best example of that would be the barber pole. While the symbol itself has nothing to do with haircutting, you can still use that symbol to identify barbers. Along the back wall is our wall dedicated to show cards. Show cards are the precursor to the movie poster, and most of these are hand-painted, or at the very least, screen-printed. In the early days of the American cinema, it was up to the individual theaters to make the displays of the movies that they were going to be showing. This meant that each theater had a different display depending on how their local artist decided to interpret the movies that they were going to be showing. As movie posters became more and more popular, many of these artists lost their jobs. They moved out west to Branson and to Vegas, where they got work doing show cards for concert venues and casinos. And from left to right on the wall, you can see the evolution in artistic styles, from the busier style of the 1950s and 60s to the cleaner aesthetic of the late 60s and 1970s. Then on the right side of the room are the two large shiny objects. These were originally the transoms to a cigar shop and are fantastic examples of glue-chipped glass. The crinkle or crystal look on the glass is a result of the glue-chipping process. Essentially, you rough up the glass on the surface in the exact design and shape that you're going for, and then you apply a very hot hide glue onto the roughed up glass. As the hot glue begins to dry and all of the creases and cracks in the glass, it'll put so much tension on the roughed up glass that it actually breaks the glass on the surface, hence the term glue chipping. It takes about two weeks for the glue to chip the glass to this point, at which point the glue is then cleaned off and they will gold leaf and silver leaf the chipped glass. Everything else on here is hand painted. So these are two examples of some incredible skills coming together to make these signs that you just don't get to see every day.